so much for coming here today and for, well, I'll just say I'm just like, you know, starstruck. <laughs> so thank you so much. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself and your organization? My name is Beverly Page. I'm the president and CEO of Orlando Community Arts, and it was founded in 2012 based on a need to give underserved communities access to the arts. Well, I'm Tequila Grand. I am the owner of Avalon Dance. Um, my company opened in 2009, and we are one of the organizations that partners with Orlando Community Arts in choreographing uh, for Claire and the Chocolate Nutcracker. Can you tell me about the mission and vision of the organization? Well, the mission of the organization is to give underserved children in underserved communities access to high quality arts experiences. And one of the things that we do is to um, raise monies, raise the funding, and also advocate for our children so that they can also perform in our Dr. Phillip um, Center for the Performing Arts. And what about your organization? Would you like to share some of your mission and vision? Yes, yeah, so at Avalon Dance, our mission is to provide a strong dance and performing arts foundation for our youth. And we try to take the more holistic approach in educating our dancers within the community. And how did you both get started or involved in your organizations? Well, first I started uh, my mom is my biggest influencer. Um, a single parent, five children, living in Jersey City um, in an underserved, impoverished neighborhood. But my mom, she, she was a nurse in the community and she would always work extra hours so that she could get bonuses to take us to see a Broadway play. Mm -hmm. And from that moment, seeing my mom, how happy she was to get me and my five siblings, all dressed up, taking us on the train to New York. That was instilled in me from an early age. And I went on to college and I majored in theater. And I came back to New York and I did my internship with Vinette Carroll, the first black woman to do a Broadway play, Black Nativity. Jersey City, and you took the train from Jersey City to New York? Yeah, we would take the path uh -huh. over to New York. And that was, that was my, the joy. You, I could tell my mom needed that outlet because she would work so hard. But I would help her get my siblings, mm -hmm. you know, together. And there we were. And everyone in the neighborhood knew who we were because we were all dressed up, headed over to Broadway. Mm -hmm. We were so excited, you know. Mm -hmm. Mom, we going to, and what play are we going to go see? Mm -hmm. And the Nutcracker was one awesome. of her favorite. Mm -hmm. It was the Nutcracker. Mm -hmm. So... I knew one day, even as an educator, you know, the, the Nutcracker is part of our curriculum in dance. Mm -hmm. You know, our youth study the Nutcracker. Uh, certain grade levels get to go to see the Orlando Ballet's Nutcracker. And, you know, I've escorted quite a few children, you know, as an educator. Mm -hmm. And sitting there and you hear the kids ask these questions. And it was from me doing a compare and contrast. What if this was you? How would you, you know, respond to the dance routines? Mm -hmm. And out of that came my book. I wrote this book mm -hmm. so that, I, that the kids in my class really would have a tool that they could also look at the Nutcracker and see one that looked like them. And um, it really made a difference. Mm -hmm. And from that, what I took, if I could instill that in our youth now, imagine what their lives would turn out to be. I think I did pretty good. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love to hear that story. Every time she tells that story, it just warms my heart um, because I can identify with it so much. Um, my mom as well worked the extra hours and the extra shifts and was always on call every weekend, even on the holidays, to ensure that she was making the extra income to get me to dance class every single week. Being on the dance floor just, it was my favorite place to be growing up. It felt safe. It felt like I had, um, I was able to be my true self when I was on that dance floor. So I always knew from the very beginning that's exactly what I wanted to do when I grew up. I wanted to be able to provide that same feeling and opportunity 
for the youth. Can you walk us through some of the behind the scenes? When do you start practicing for the show? Well, I can answer that. <laughs> the preparation for the show never stops. Miss Page works all year round in preparation for the next show to come. Um, there's so much that goes into preparing and getting ready, even just for the auditions. We hold auditions every season in August, and um, we uh, go through an extensive, I would say we're there all day on a Saturday for Absolutely. auditions, starting at about 9.30 a.m. Um, we audition hundreds of very excited little dancers who are just eager to get on that stage. And then once we've created our um, placements for each dancer, we then start to prepare them for the rehearsal schedule. Mm -hmm. We're in rehearsals every Saturday from September all the way Until up into November. the show. November. The week, Thanksgiving week. Thanksgiving Absolutely. week, yeah. So these kids um, and parents, they are committing mm -hmm. their time every Saturday um, for quite a few hours to come in mm -hmm. to rehearse, learn the choreography, learn their placements on stage. Costume fitting uh, takes place during our Saturday rehearsal times as well, um, and it's very extensive. Yes. yes, and we, and I, I along with Ms. Takia, I consult her on the appropriate costumes that would be appropriate for each scene. And I do a lot of my ordering of costumes during the summer months, and we have extensive costume cleaning because we have over 144 children in the show and we make sure that every costume is clean. This year have a costume team yep. that will actually come in you and- do all the fitting. Yes. And, yep. mm -hmm. um, each Where student... do you get your costumes from? Oh We're boy, all over. all over the place. All yeah, over. there are a lot yes. of dance companies that have you know, quite a few. Uh, Miss Page does a really good job at um, creating mm -hmm. um, looks as well, too. Mm -hmm. So piecing um, looks together from different companies to make one costume. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you utilize volunteers for any of this work? Oh, my goodness. We, have, <laughs> we do. Parents, a lot of our volunteers are parents. Um, a lot of our volunteers are educators. This year is going to be phenomenal because we are collaborating with Jones High School, um, their orchestra. We're also partnering with the Jones High School Alumni Jazz Band. Um, we have uh, Miss Naomi uh, Nelson, who is the first African-American female band director. She's going to be playing solo on her saxophone. And we're going to bring the sounds of Duke Ellington. So you're going to actually see what it's like to go to the Kennedy Center mm -hmm. to see the Nutcracker. Tell me about the experience of putting together the music okay. for the show. Mm -hmm. Or should I back up and maybe go to the story? Because the story yeah. comes first, The right? story comes and first. The music I, overlaps exactly. with that, right. yes. At first, I'm a theater major. Mm -hmm. So I've studied theater directing. Mm -hmm. And of course, you have a script. Well, first I have a story, mm -hmm. you know, the book. And then... I write it into a script so that it's adaptable for the stage. Um, and in that is basically being able to utilize the music for that particular scene. Mm -hmm. Like it starts in Harlem. So in that scene, we bring a lot of the hip hop. This year we want to celebrate the anniversary of hip hop. So we, we're bringing in some professional TikTok. Yep, TikTok. TikTok artists, dancers yep. out of Las Vegas, mm -hmm. who's gonna really give us that beat, you know, the mm -hmm. hip hop vibe. And um, Claire is gonna come out into the community where the community is celebrating. We have the 40 plus um, double Dutch ladies the older ladies, they're going to be out there double dutching with the kids. So it's it's a combination of feeling what literally happens in a community. Mm -hmm. That's how it starts off. Mm -hmm. Then it goes into the home where Claire is and the family is getting ready to celebrate for the holiday. And of course, we're adding a lot of holiday music to that scene. The orchestra will be playing some of Duke Ellington's music in that scene. And then there's transitional music from one scene to the next. And then we get into the um, traditional Nutcracker where uh, Claire falls asleep with her Nutcracker and she goes into her dream. And then the Sugar Plum Fairy comes out and she transforms the room into something very magical. 
I so think, it's, it just builds. Yeah. It does. I think mm-hmm. what is so exciting about this show is that if you know the traditional story of the Nutcracker, you're still going to get the tradition. You're still going to get the feel of that storyline. But Miss Page does a really good job at just kind of mixing things up mm-hmm. and giving a a feeling of the new new music, modern. a little modern age music, and um, and some old school music old school? as well too. Yeah, oh, so I yeah. think it doesn't matter how old you are, you're gonna come to this show and you're gonna have a great time. Exactly. And then we go to the countries. Yes. And what's so authentic about the countries is that we actually invite the, the countries to come and participate. We have our Asian community is involved. We have uh, the flamenco Mm -hmm. dancers. They're involved. Africa, traditional African music and style, Mm -hmm. the drums. Mm -hmm. And then we go to... We've got the Caribbean culture. Yep, it's being represented. Absolutely. So that, to me, is so educational. And when anyone sees that on stage, imagine that individual that have never visited any of those countries. Mm -hmm. They can take a journey with Claire and actually feel a sense of pride, purpose. You know, it's just, it's amazing. The sets for the show, how do you put that all together? (laughs) That is Miss Page has a vision. She has a thing for stage sets. I know that that was her um, background, her theater background. Um, She does a phenomenal job at creating. I have a visual artist, and we meet at my kitchen table. (laughs) And he draws what I'm telling him to draw. Mm -hmm. So amazing. And um, he is from Brazil, John. And um, when we get to the theater, we what we do is we get input from all the countries. We ask we ask everyone, how do you vision your scene looking? And we we literally sketch it from my kitchen table. <laughs> and once it's, we bring it to the theater, we put it in a PowerPoint slide, and then we use a projection, and it's projected to a psych at the Dr. Phillips, and you literally think you're there. Literally. Mm -hmm. I remember the Harlem scene. That's the one that got me the most because we did it with brownstones. And when I walked onto the stage, you know, right before, I had to stop because I was like, I'm in Orlando. (laughs) You feel like you're in Harlem. And even the seeing the children go out on the stage for the first time and they actually see the backgrounds, it's... It's so compelling. Yeah. It's like, did how did y'all do that? You know, but it, that's what we do. Yeah. Okay. Around what time of year do the shows start? The show takes place every year in November, right Thanksgiving after Thanksgiving weekend. Yep. Okay. Right yes. after Thanksgiving. Right after Thanksgiving. Yes. We kick off that Christmas holiday season. Yes. Right. Right, right on the same weekend as Fusion Fest. So you already have the crowds downtown, mm-hmm. and uh, they're coming on the inside now. And I really appreciate that. How can our viewers get involved and volunteer? In order to volunteer, of course, they have to, you know, go get a, a security background check, mm-hmm. you know, so that we make sure that, you know, because we, we work with a lot of children. Yes. So the safety of our kids is paramount. Mm-hmm. They can always, you know, request and they have the proper background, you know, we, we can always look and see if there's a place for that. Absolutely. But Just most, of our, most mm-hmm. of our parents and the organizations that sponsor us, they will provide us with any, you know, resources that we need as well. Okay. Yep. And there is a, there's information on the website, There's correct? information yep. on the website. You can visit our website mm-hmm. and um, there's opportunities to donate to on donate. the website. Mm-hmm. There's opportunities to email what is your website? It's Claire and the Chocolate Nutcracker dot com. Okay. Yes. Same as the story dot com. Right, great. All right, so to learn a little bit more about how you prepare for the show and some of the classes that you do in your school, we're gonna play this little activity. How exciting. And we're gonna go ahead and fairly you're gonna spin the wheel. Oh, we landed on Zumba. Adult Zumba. 
to do well, adults get involved? Yeah, so we do have a um, large children's program, but we do have quite a few adult classes. I added the adult classes to the schedule um, just because our moms, they sit out in the lobby and they're like, well, what about us? You know, so I have quite a few adult classes. Adult Zumba uh, is taught three times a week at the studio. It is a high energy uh, cardio dance class. Mm -hmm. It is an hour long and you are there having a good time, but also burning quite a few calories. <laughs> we also um, we offer not only the adult Zumba, we have adult ballet bar fit. So it's like a ballet um, Pilates yoga fitness class for parents. Mm -hmm. And then um, we have an adult tap class as well too. Oh, neat. Yes. Top. Yes. <laughs> Fun. Okay. All right. Let's see what's next. Ooh. Did we get the movement. Okay. So those classes, that is what we call our pre-level dance program, ages two to three. Mm -hmm. So our entire program does start at age two. Um, though it's called creative movement, they are still learning the ballet and tap foundation. So believe it or not, my two-year-olds come out of dance class and they can tell you all the positions of the feet, the positions of their arms. They can tell you all their rhythm patterns and tap, the sounds of a toe, the sounds of a heel. They um, are able to tell me how to stand in passe, what a tendu is. So we teach all of those ballet and tap techniques and terms in a creative manner. Nice. Yes. Do they also, so do you have those two to three year olds in the show as well? So they're in a recital for Avalon Dance at the end of every season. But uh, Claire and the Chocolate Nut Nutcracker, we start at about age um, eight, nine. Yeah, yeah eight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Or some seven-year-olds that have been on stage right. turning experience. eight yeah. experience. Yeah. Okay, so you just want to make sure that they're experienced on stage. Exactly, because that's a bigger better stage. Better control. Than exactly. Yep. Yeah. And it can be a little intimidating. Overwhelming. Yes. So. Yeah. But there are some six-year-olds that can handle a stage mm -hmm. like that. So, you know, we, the choreographers are the ones that will say they're ready or okay. they're not. Okay. Yes, let's see what's next. Ooh, hip hop. So we have, um, that's one of our larger classes on the schedule. We offer our hip hop classes are from kindergarten all the way through high school. And we have various styles of hip hop. As you know, hip hop is such a wide variety, um, a, a huge genre. But we teach everything from pop and lock, from crumping, mm -hmm. I'm more of an old school style um, hip hop teacher. Mm -hmm. So, which believe it or not, this generation, they love that older style of, um, of hip hop. So, yeah. And this year, you'll see a lot of that in the Harlem scene. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because we're going to be celebrating, of the course, 50 the 50 years, year yeah. anniversary. Oh, that's excellent. So, mm -hmm. Look forward to that. So, you yes. get to see a lot of her students in that particular Absolutely. scene. Absolutely. Oh, it landed on pre-level ballet and tap. <laughs> Good job. All right. <laughs> so this class is um, the next class from the creative movement class. So ideally, when a student starts our program at Avalon Dance, they start at age two in the creative movement class. They stay there until they're about four. Once they're four, they move up to our pre-level ballet and tap combination class. Things get a little bit more serious in that class. Mm -hmm. um, we introduce the ballet bar, all of the rules of the ballet bar. We then really start instilling class etiquette, how we enter into a dance studio. Mm -hmm. Our form, our posture, hair must be pulled back, poise, all of that is taught in these pre-level classes to prepare them for that level one skill that they need for the next class. Yes, intermediate and advanced jazz. Jazz, I think, is one of my favorite techniques as well. This age group usually, once they get to this intermediate advanced level, um, they're usually from middle school to high school. In order to get into this class, uh, you must also take a ballet class. Ballet is our foundation at Avalon Dance. And um, we teach all of the traditional styles of dance. 
I can say that our kids not only are learning dance technique, but they are learning dance history as well. So they can tell you exactly who Bob Fosse is. They can um, explain the Fosse style, explain the Fosse choreography and all of his pieces that he's choreographed as well too. And the last one there. Oh. Tiny Tots Tumble. So this is our ages, five, four to five year olds are in this class. And this is our foundation to tumbling. Um, so they learn everything from back bends, headstands, cartwheels. We've learned that at this age, they like to flip around all over the place. Mm -hmm. So I added the class to the schedule so that we can teach them the safe and proper way to do all of their tricks. Oh, nice. <laughs> mm. Yes, and I think that's all of the classes. And aside from that, we do have our ballet program. We have ballet um, one all the way through level five. Our foundation in ballet is more of a classical style that we teach. And then uh, we also have a contemporary class. We teach all of the modern foundations. So our students do learn Graham technique. They learn Lamoon and they learn Horton as well. Okay, what are those last three? So, <laughs> For those of us who don't know. Those yes, terms. okay, so Martha Graham was a big pioneer in the modern art. Same with Jose Lamoon and Lester Horton. Yes, and they, all three techniques um, are very different, very different art forms. And they uh, guided the movement of modern dance. Mm. Oh. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm. Oh, I yes. thought we just all made it up. No. Oh, no. no. Well, there is even more. Whatever there's... inspired us. <clears throat> no. Oh, yeah. So in recent years, it's become a contemporary art form, right? Because now it's this big umbrella of essentially it's movement and expression, right? But that contemporary style does come from that modern dance foundation. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for joining me. It's it's Thank been a blast, and I all the information I learned I did not know. <laughs> <laughs> did not know all the different aspects of the show. So thank you so much. Thank you. For thank you for sharing us. the behind the scenes with our viewers. Thank you. Thank you for having us. If you're enjoying this show, please subscribe to our channel and follow our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter accounts.